Welcome to part four. In this video, we're gonna complete our project by labeling the vertical axis and putting together the final bar graph block. All right, so let's get to it. Let's edit the label vertical axis block first. And I'm gonna set a small goal for myself right now. I wanna to go to the bottom of the Y axis and I just wanna write the number zero and add a tick mark. So I wanna make sure I go there first before I start labeling anything. So I'm gonna go to, uh, not zero, zero, but I'm going to go to, let's say negative 235, let's see if that works. And the reason I'm writing negative 235 for the x-axis is because I see that I'm drawing the axis at negative 200. So I'm trying to go a little bit further left, and I think negative 235 might be right. And for the y, I actually want to go to the y origin. So I know that is stored inside of a global variable, and I'm going to select that. I'm gonna use the Y origin, so it's gonna be right here like on the edge. And then I wanna label, I wanna use the label for writing zero, not editing, but I actually wanna make a duplicate copy of it, and I wanna label the text zero. And size 18 might be a little bit too big, so I'll choose size 12, and the direction, I wanna make sure it's drawn the correct way, Let's see, I want it to look like this. So it's going to be 90. The direction is going to be 90 for this. Now, if I click on this, it's going to go to that location and draw a label with a text that says that. Let's see if it works. Let's just try running it. I'm going to hit apply. And when I label the vertical axis, we can see a tiny little zero down there. So, so far, so good. Maybe it's a little bit too small, but I'll just make the size 14. And we'll try again. Let me... Uh, Ah, I'm going to have to clear the stage, draw the axes, draw the bars, and then label the vertical axis. And it looks like zero right over there in that location is pretty good at size 14. Now i got to figure out what my interval is. How many numbers should I be going up by? So I am going to use my greatest value in the data set and divide that by 10. Because remember, I want to have like 10 equal parts. So I'm going to use this divided by 10. And let's turn this into a script variable. So I'm going to store that at the top. And we'll call this uh, script variable interval. Interval. Or maybe I'll call it y-axis interval. Y-axis interval. Not interview, interval. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to set it equal to the greatest value in the data set divided by 10. So we want to set the y-axis interval. And it's going to be that divided by 10. And now what I can do is, instead of manually writing that 10 times, now I can use a for block. So if I use a for block, where is it? Right down here. There we go. For i equals 1 up to 10, we're going to, uh, we're going to label, let's, let me think about this. So we have to make sure that we go up, up the, uh, the y-axis. So remember, right now our y-axis, I think it's, it's got a height of 240. Or actually, I shouldn't really use a specific number. I should use this vertical height. So I'm going to use this vertical height and go up by the vertical height divided by 10, I guess. So it's going to be the same idea here. So we're going to set another variable to the vertical height divided by 10. And let's create a new script variable. So the y-axis interval, and this is the maybe distance to go up y-axis by. <laughs> this is like the worst variable name in the world, but I'm just going to use it because I'm getting a little tired here. And I'm just going to try to see if this works. So we want to make sure that we go up by that much. So we're going to change our y value, we're going to change our y coordinate by this much. So as we go up the y axis before we label. So I went to that location. This is the start. I wrote a zero. Then I want to go up a certain amount. So we're going to change the y by the distance to go up the y axis by. And that is, I know, a terrible, terrible variable name. But I think it's very easy to understand. We're just going up the, up the y-axis by a certain distance. And now I can label this new value. So let me create a label. And not text zero, but I'm going to, let's see, let me think. 
So I am going to add the y-axis interval. So I'm going to add the y-axis interval to that zero, right? So let me think. I could put uh, the y-axis interval inside here. So it's going to go up by that much. It started at zero. It's going to go up by that much. And now all I need to do is I have to make sure that I change the y-axis interval by that same interval. So I just have to keep adding. So by using change, I have to keep adding the y-axis interval every single time I do this for 10 times. I think this might work. Uh, let me think. So we change the y, we label the text, or we write the label, and then we change the y-axis interval by that much. So now it's increasing. And it's going to keep doing this. It's going to keep changing the y-axis, um, the distance, labeling, changing the y-axis interval, and just keep doing this 10 times. So let's see if this works. Let me hit apply, and let me label the vertical axis. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it looks like it works, but we never went back to the left. So I have to make sure that I go to the, the correct location, but not... Uh, it's not going to be at the y origin. Otherwise, all the numbers will be at the bottom left. So what I want to do is, let's see. I'm changing the y axis, so that's good. But I keep moving over. So it looks like it's just going to keep moving like up and to the right, up and to the right. So all I have to do is I have to make sure that I set the x value to 0 before I label. So what that'll do is make sure that everything's set to the left. Let me remove the go to block. Let me hit apply and let's try this again. I'm going to clear the stage, draw the axes, draw the bars, and then label the vertical axis. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what is happening? Why is it going so far over? So let me open it up. This is good. This is good work to debug. Um, I am changing the Y. So after, let's see, <laughs> I'm going to have to trace through the code. I'm going to go to this location, I'm going to label the text, and then I'm going to change the y by this much. But then it says, oh, it says set x to 0 when I have to set it back to negative 235. That's why. So that's why I was drawing all of these from the middle. So let me hit apply, let me hit OK, let me clear the stage, draw the axes, draw the bars, and label the vertical axis. And look at that. We're looking OK but the numbers are off, I think, because we're going from 0 to 871, and it just keeps going up like really fast. So we must be doing something wrong here. So let's see. Um, what am I doing wrong? So we're going to have to go through the code again. So I am, so the, what we have to change is this label. So something's wrong here in the y-axis interval. So what I'm doing is, huh. So why, oh, the pr I think the problem is I'm never, no, does it matter if I initialize? The, I should, I mean, I guess what I could do is I could initialize the y-axis interval to zero. No, that's not the issue. Let me think. Maybe there's something wrong with my greatest value in data set. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to say what that value is just so I could see what it is. So after I initialize it, the y-axis interval, I'm actually going to say it. Let's see what happens. Let me hit apply. Let me clear the stage, draw the axes, draw the bars, label the vertical axis, and nothing happened. Oh, it didn't, nothing happened because it must have been saying the block, but it was hidden. So let me have to, I have to redo everything again, but let me just show the sprite and then label the vertical axis. It's saying that the greatest number divided by 10 is 871.5. So, hmm, what's wrong with that? Oh, wait, no, that's, that seems right. Because the greatest value, the Chinese emissions value, was about 8,700. So is this actually wrong? Uh, where does it start going crazy? Oh, look at that. So it goes from 0 to 871, so that's correct. Then it goes from 871 to 1743, that seems right. But then it's doubling. It looks like it keeps doubling, and that's wrong. Because now we're just growing exponentially, and that's not what we want happening. 
So I'm going to change the way that I calculate the change y-axis interval by. Hmm. Let me think. So instead of maybe increasing it by itself and having it continue to double, why don't I just uh, multiply it by the by this i value? Because if I multiply it by i, I can just make sure that I'm not going up exponentially. Now it should be pretty linear, and I think this could work. Let me think. Let me think for just one second. Um, okay, so x-axis interval times, let's say, 1 the first time. So after it labels 0, the first time it's going to do 871 times 1. And then I'm going to go up, and then it's going to be by 2 all the way up to 10. And 10 times the x-axis interval is going to give us 8,700 and change, and that is perfect. So maybe this will work. I'm going to hit apply, then OK. Clear my stage, draw my axes, draw my bars, label the vertical axis. Oh, <laughs> right now it's saying that. And that looks perfect. There it is. Well, almost perfect, because it looks like we're kind of going over the stage or over the line. So that's not what we want. What we want to do, maybe for that, is to round down. So that way we don't say the decimals. Or we could round up, I guess. So let's use the round block. Where is that? It's probably found right here. There it is. So not square root, but the round. So I'm going to round before I say anything. And that's what I'm going to do. So let's see. Let's try this one last time. Moment of truth here. Clear the stage. Draw the axes draw the bars, and label the, the vertical axis. Perfect. Now I want to make sure that my sprite is hidden. So let me just hide it before I do anything else. So it's hidden. You can see that now we don't have any decimals. It's rounding. And is there anything else I want to do? Oh yeah, I want to remove this save block because I don't need to save this anymore. Otherwise, it's just slowing down my code. So go to, draw axes, draw bars, label vertical axis. And that looks pretty good. Now, I do want you guys to add the functionality for writing a small little tick mark or drawing a small little tick mark for the vertical axis. But I'm not going to tell you how to do that. It's up to you. Uh, I will give you a hint, though. So after we label the axis, what we want to do is go to a specific x coordinate. And then we can maybe draw two underscores to have the little tick marks. We might want to move China, USA, Russia, and all the bars over a little bit more. But I think that should do it. Let's put it all together inside of a bar graph block. So let's hit apply. Let's hit OK. Let us create that bar graph. Here it is. Let me edit this. So what is this change x by? So after it draws the axes, oh, we need to, I guess, reset the position. But did I already do that in my draw bars? Let's see. In yeah, I already did it inside draw bars. So I don't think I need this change x by. I don't think. Let me keep it over here on the side just to make sure. But I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to hit OK. And when I run this, it should draw the same thing. And it, it went so fast that we didn't see anything. Let me clear the stage. I'm going to hit the bar graph again. And look at that. It drew the exact same thing. Now the biggest moment of truth here. I'm going to remove the CO2 emissions data and try the emissions data per capita because that is different. So let me clear the stage. And here it is, the biggest moment of truth. Perfect. So it drew the bars and then it drew the correct y-axis intervals. Let me just look at that data to make sure that the largest number is 18 or close to 18. And it looks like it is. The USA has a very large uh, CO2 emissions data per capita. India has a very low one, about 1.45. So that looks just about right on our bar graph. And all that we're missing is the little tick marks. But like I said, go to a specific x coordinate and then draw like an underscore or a couple of them. And you might want to move all the bars over just a little bit. We've accomplished so much in this video series, you should be extremely proud of yourselves if you've gotten this far. Even if you were following along with me, don't stop there. You can definitely go back and refactor my code and make it a little bit more efficient and fix some things that I've done poorly just to get it working. In fact, if you did something different but still got it to work, leave a comment below and share what you did. Thank you so much for watching this multi-part series. I will see you in the next one.